Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with a weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is my Louis Vuitton Neverfull MM in the Damien Azor. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workouts, go to work, let's do your laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. Starting with the first question from Miss K. Coy. I am really struggling. I purchase designer items and do not use. I have a card case purchased one year ago and a Chanel wallet on chain purchased in February that still has the paper wrapped around the strap. I am so fearful of damaging these items that cost a significant amount of money, but I cannot bring myself to stop purchasing them. Then the guilty feelings all over again. I know exactly, exactly what you're talking about. Years ago, I used to put items in a bubble and I was so terrified of using them because I'd end up getting a mark on them, I'd end up getting a scratch on them, and I don't have the economic possibility to just bat my eyes and if something happens to the bag, I can go run out there and get another one. Not at all. It takes time for me to be able to acquire Acquire the funds for that bag or for that small of a good or whatever it was so like I said I know exactly what you're talking about and uh, there was something that ended up working out for me it might not be for everyone uh, but I just thought I'd throw that out there just in case uh, I kind of forced myself maybe not forced because that's a little um, that's a little harsh but I pushed myself to use whatever item it was for like a month straight and not and try to not worry about what was going to happen and just use it for a month straight use it for a month straight and um, by using it for that month straight I started to fall in love with it in a completely different way not necessarily because it wasn't beautiful but because I really enjoyed using the item and even though they are beautiful to look at they're even better to use and I know it's a lot easier said than done but if you kind of push yourself to use those items before you buy anything else, like if you want to, you know, if you take out your wallet on chain and you use it for a month straight before you buy anything, you know, you can't buy anything until you use that item for a month straight or two weeks straight or whatever the case is. Um, I think that that might end up helping to kind of not put those items in that in that type of bubble. And I still struggle with it from time to time. We all know how I felt about the beige GST. You know, I couldn't bring myself to use it. I was terrified to use it. And um, so I struggle with it still. But for the most part, I, I, try to, I try to incorporate them. I try to use them before I buy anything else. You know, and um, this kind of ties into the whole uh, get the gimmies. At least I think so. Because I end up seeing so many things. Um, before, I ended up seeing so many things that I was just like, oh, I want to get them, I want to get them, I want to get them, and then I'd never ever use them, and they'd end up sitting there for like a year, year and a half, or whatever it was, uh, but if you just kind of push yourself to use those items, you'll notice that you start to fall in love with them for a completely different reason. Not necessarily the brand, not necessarily this, that, or the other, but more so because you really thoroughly enjoy using the item. So that's what I would give as far as a piece of advice of being able to, uh, to kind of um, get away from that. And um, another suggestion might be the pre-love market because on the pre-love market, uh, some of the items are in great condition. Other items have uh, some beauty marks. So that way you're not necessarily spending, um, you know, X amount of dollars on this item that you might not use. And maybe if it already has some beauty marks on it, it might make you feel a little bit more comfortable to be able to use it moving forward. So hopefully that ends up helping out. But if any of you guys have any suggestions, let us know in the comment section down below. But uh, you can do this. You have some fabulous items. I know I've talked to you before on Instagram and I say, you know what, just put it all aside and just go for it. Use them. And if they do get flaws, if they do get beauty marks, it just adds character to the bag. So fabulous question and hopefully I was able to help. Next question from Sunny Cakes. Have you heard anything about Louis Vuitton getting rid of wait lists? The Louis Vuitton at King of Prussia Mall in Pennsylvania informed me that they were no longer doing a wait list. Do you know if this is the case for all Louis Vuittons? Um, this is a fabulous question and from what what I was told a week, week and a half ago, uh, yes, they are getting rid of all of the wait lists nationwide. I don't know if that's necessarily going to apply internationally, but like I said, uh, nationwide, they are getting rid of all of them. Uh, I was talking to a, a couple sales associates and they had said that they got quite a bit of backlash uh, when they started getting rid of the wait list for the Pachette Matisse, the Favorite, and a lot of their other uh, popular handbags. But ultimately, it ended up working out in their best interest to completely get rid of them. So now it is a 
a first come first serve type of uh, situation and they will also um, before they were a little bit more not strict but it was a little bit more difficult to order something over the phone or to get it from another store uh, but now that's something that they're trying to incorporate so you can call that other location or you can t uh, talk to your sales associate and if someone in Georgia has the item that you're looking for they'll be able to uh, to ship the item to you that's what I was told but I strongly encourage you guys to talk to your own sales associates just to verify and get a little bit more peace of mind when it comes to that uh, but yeah so they're completely getting rid of them um, and like I, like I said, the, at first they got a lot of backlash because people were very upset. You know, the Pichette Matisse, I think at one point had like 500 people on the wait list. And um, uh, I was told that a lot of people would get on the wait list, then the item would come in and then they'd completely forget about it or they wouldn't want it or whatever the case was. And then they'd end up having to go five, six people down and it was just a mess. She's all, it made it a lot more difficult for the people that really wanted the item to get it because there were people in between that weren't necessarily that serious about it so um, yeah I don't know so I have no idea if that's necessarily going to be internationally if that's going to happen internationally if it's only nationwide for us here in the United States uh, but yeah so no more no more wait lists so I just thought I'd throw that out there but if you guys have any information um, if you want to share what your sales associates have told us please let us know in the comment section down below next question from Malika R at the end of your videos you say have a fabulous day or not the choice is yours what does that mean uh, the meaning behind make it a fabulous day or not the choice is yours means that I choose to make the day as great as possible and not to let anyone or anything bring me down I know that's not always Always going to be the case I know that there might be certain circumstances where it's difficult to see it that way but for the most part I try to see the silver lining in absolutely everything I try to see everything in a positive light and I wasn't always this way uh, I've said this before I didn't always see uh, see things this way and um, I choose to make the day fabulous I want to go out there and say you know what I'm living I'm breathing I'm gonna go out there give it my all and just have an amazing amazing day there are times when it's incredibly difficult, as I said before, to just sit there and say, oh, everything's sunshine and rainbows. Um, trust me, I know that, but I try to, I try to put a different spin on things. Maybe it's because that helps me to process the situation a little bit better, or it helps me to cope with my feelings in that particular scenario. But whatever the case may be, all I know is that at the end of the day, when I lay, when I lay my head down to rest, I am just grinning from ear to ear. I'm very, very happy. And uh, it's not gonna be everyone's cup of tea, but like I said, I wasn't always this way. I didn't always see the silver lining in everything. I don't see everything as sunshine and rainbows all the time. There are times when I do get incredibly sad or I do get incredibly upset. I did talk about this recently in my Get Ready With Me video, but for the most part, I, I, I look at what I have in my life as far as my family and the fact that I have my health and I do have that love that surrounds me and that's what I focus on and just focusing on the blessings that I have in my life type of thing. So by doing that, I just go out there, I give it my all, and I'm just like, I'm gonna have a great day because I'm gonna have a great day type of scenario, type of thing, you know what I mean? I don't know, like I said, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but it certainly helps me, and it has helped me through some of the darkest periods of my life, and um, yeah, that's why it's kind of like my slogan. <laughs> that's what I like to say, uh, and I know some of you have, uh, have shared with me that you also implement it into your daily lives and you also say it to either your clients or your students or whatever the case may be and I think that that is awesome. So that was a little long-winded but that's what it means when I say make it a fabulous day or, or not the choice is yours is I choose to make the day fabulous because I'm not going to let anything or anyone try to bring me down. Next question from I don't know if it's pronounced is a she weird or is a she weird? Either way, my apologies if I butchered the name, uh, but I was wondering why you don't use the dust bags in your display anymore. Was it because obviously it looks better you can see them or another reason? Wondering because I have mine stored like yours and just recently put them back in the dust bags, scared they could ruin. Uh, okay, so this is a great question. I do get asked this quite often and um, why I don't use the bags in my display anymore. I actually do. The moment I turn off the camera, all of my bags go back in their dust bags. Trust me, I have tried my hardest to leave them out, but I get so paranoid. I'm like, no, no, put them back in the dust bags. Uh, but there are two reasons why I have them out whenever I do film. 
The first one, like you said, uh, yes, it does provide some type of eye candy uh, to have, you know, some types of colors or different bags on my backdrop. And you will notice that uh, the shelves behind me, they are constantly changing with whatever they have. Sometimes I'll incorporate shoes. Other times I'll incorporate other like little knickknacks that I have in my room. So it's never really the same. I get very, very stir crazy and I don't like to have the same uh, display on the background. So you will notice that. And the main reason why I actually took them out of their dust bags um, was because it helps the lighting in my room. Even though I do have studio lights, because the colors that I do have in my in my room, they're grays and uh, tan and uh, also white, they're such bright colors that if I was to have my handbags in the dust bag, since most of them are yellow and white, uh, it actually makes the, the video look really, really dark, even with those lights, as I said before. So it really helps to absorb the color and not make it look so dark and dingy type of, um, type of thing going on. I think maybe if I change the the walls of my room it might end up helping out but <laughs> I really like the I really like the colors. Uh, so that's uh, the main reason because I noticed that in my previous videos uh, when I had this um, when I had this uh, the shelving behind me and I had them in their dust bags I looked also very very dark and anytime I'd show something uh, up to the to the lens it would make everything very very dark. Uh, so that's the main reason. It helps to absorb the color and it also provides a little bit of eye candy but trust me the moment the camera is off everything goes back i am way too paranoid i'm just like nope nope can't do it maybe i'll get <laughs> maybe i'll get the courage to leave them out and about someday but um, nope right there with you <laughs> i have to put them back in the dust bags it makes me feel better all right it's just part of my craziness some people are very um some people can totally leave them out no problem but I <laughs> tried it for like like two days or three days, and I'm all, no, I can't do it, I can't do it. I kept thinking about like, oh, what if this happens, what if that happens, because of the light that I do get in my room, it would um, end up uh, causing a little bit of, of the colors to change on the handbags if I left them out and about, I don't know. <laughs> but nope, I put them back in the dust bag, so fantastic question, hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Emily. I'm thinking about purchasing a Louis Vuitton monogram style bracelet like the Confidential bracelet. Do you own any Louis Vuitton bracelets? And if so, would you recommend them? Uh, okay, so yes, I do have a Louis Vuitton bracelet. I think I've had it for maybe three or four years, something like that, and it is this beauty. I believe it's called the Spirit Bracelet. I can never remember the name to save my life, and I always forget to check it right before I do a video, so my sincere apologies, but I think it's called the Spirit Bracelet, um, and uh, I do love the fact that it does have the Nano Monogram throughout, and to be completely honest with you, I think I've probably used this a handful of times the entire time that I've had it. I think it's really cute. I do like... Um, some of the details that it has, uh, but the main reason why I end up kind of staying away from it is because it does have the leather on the interior. Now, I'm not the sweatiest person on the planet, okay, and I know this is going to be total TMI, and I'm not trying to gross you guys out, but I'm just trying to be honest. Um, it depends really when you wear it, but I noticed that whenever I did, sometimes my wrists would end up getting a little too sweaty, and then the sweat would end up being on the leather. It was just, it didn't feel very pleasant, you know, it was kind of wet, it was, I don't know, like I said, I'm not trying to gross you guys out, but um, <laughs> it didn't make me feel warm and fuzzy wearing this thing. So if I was to recommend a Louis Vuitton bracelet, I would go for the ones that don't have any leather on the interior just because it ends up getting, it can get really hot, it can get somewhat uncomfortable. The confidential bracelet, that, uh, like the one that you guys just saw in the picture, I think it is a beautiful bracelet. They have a few different confidentials because they have the daily confidential and then they have that one. But I think it's really, really cute. It's very simple. It kind of reminds me of like a hair tie. And uh, I do like the fact that the hardware does have uh, the monogram on it. Definitely go for the ones that don't have the leather on the interior because sometimes this can get kind of dingy and uh, just because I haven't used it too too mo uh, too often that's why it's not so bad but otherwise you guys would be able to see all sorts of spots on there I don't know <laughs> but I remember wearing it I'm like it feels kind of weird like there's a lot of heat going on on my wrist you know and after I took it off it just felt it felt kind of weird you know <laughs> I don't know maybe it's just me but like I said I just want I wanted to share my experience uh, so that's that guy uh, but I do think that they're very cute and if you like them um, 
I think that uh, the Confidential is a beautiful bracelet. Next question from Bon Denaz. I've noticed some fashion houses have sales, which is great, but sometimes this really puts me off. I know I would feel horrible if after purchasing an item, it was then reduced by 40%. Do brands that have sales make you hesitant before pulling the trigger, or do you wait for the sales and hope the item you want doesn't sell out beforehand? Uh, okay, so am I hesitant to pull the trigger on brands that have sales? I am not. And really the main reason that is, is because I end up going for the classics. And unfortunately, the classics are never on sale. Uh, season after season, a lot of these brands introduce footwear, uh, clothing, or jewelry, and uh, after the season, uh, is over when they're starting to make room for other items those will always go on sale there's sometimes they're 40 percent off 50 percent off i mean you can get some really really great deals on uh on some of these items and uh, for example uh, with chanel footwear they net like the classic ballerina flats the black and the beige never go on sale but if you're looking for red green pink then those um like i said are almost always end up going on sale after after the season and there was one time when i was so excited about possibly getting a red um some red ballerina flats you guys know my whole thing with red and i kept putting it off and putting it off and i was just like i don't know should i go for it should i not and uh I didn't end up going for it and then I think it was probably a month later, a month and a half later, I saw it at the boutique and they were on sale. So I immediately went and asked and uh, they said all they had was size uh, like five and six uh, and they're they're very limited when, when the sales do happen, they're very limited as far as their clothing or their footwear. So. I do wear a 40 in those ballerina flats, and she even says she's all, that's usually the first uh, size that sells out even before it goes on sale. So I was kind of bummed out. I was like, okay, you know what? <laughs> I'm just gonna stick to the black ones that I wear. I'm okay with that, and I'll just add pops of red here and there. Because I do agree with you, I would be super bummed out if I ended up paying full price for something and you know then a few weeks later a few months later it did go on sale but at the same time it's like if you really like that color if it really you know if you if it really speaks to you and you feel that it might be very popular then there is that possibility that it won't be available um, when they do go on sale just because of sizing or whatever it was so if you like it it's one of those things just go for it right then and there and don't think you know oh it's gonna go on sale later on because that it might happen it might not it might sell out beforehand um, <laughs> so yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a bummer, but I end up sticking to good old black for the most part, and those never ever go on sale. So fantastic question, hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Alondra N. What is your favorite handbag and small leather good from Louis Vuitton that you have or had in all three canvases and why? What advice would you give to someone decided whether or not to get the same item in all three canvases? Uh, okay, so over the years I have had a few multiples um, as far as small leather goods. I no longer have them. I did appreciate them, but they weren't necessarily favorites. Um, and as far as the handbags go, uh, I do have the Speedy, uh, the Speedy and the Neverfull in all canvas prints. Now, even though I do have mad, mad love for Speedies, um, I have a Mon Mano, a Bandolier, and two classics. I think that they're great. For me, I'm gonna have to say that my favorite is the Neverfull. I have the Neverfull in all three canvas prints and I am obsessed with this bag. I am definitely a tote girl. There's just something about being able to carry everything and the kitchen sink in here that I absolutely adore. Uh, and uh, as far as giving advice to someone to, to get all three canvases, if you, for example, I'm the type of person that if I really like something and if I have the opportunity to buy all of the colors or if I have the, the chance to get all three canvas prints, I'm going to go for it because I really like that item. I really use it. Um, I use it all the time. And as far as the three prints, I know that I can incorporate all three canvases year round. So it's not like I'm going to just use uh, one, you know, this month and then I'll forget about it for a year or anything like that. I'm constantly rotating them. Uh, so that's what I would suggest. If you see yourself um, if you're crazy in love with the design, if you're crazy in love with the silhouette or whatever the case may be, if you love it so much that you see yourself using it year round in different prints, then I say go for it. Uh, because I have said before that even though I do have all three canvases, I personally feel that they're all worlds apart depending upon the type of outfit that I want to go for. Like when I use the Damien Azor, 
I don't think it's only for spring and summer. That's usually when I tend to, to carry it um, more than any uh, more than any other season. But I still like to incorporate it sometimes in the winter time. But I like the fact that it adds a little bit of freshness, a little bit of lightness to my outfit. Or if I want something very carefree, I go for a Damien Ben or whatever you know whatever it is. But uh, yeah, if you see yourself using the item all the time and being able to rotate it quite often, then um, I most certainly recommend going for it in all three canvases. But if you don't see yourself doing it, I would kind of hold off a bit and maybe add other um, other styles or other brands into your collection. But um, I, I am a creature of habit. I've said this before. And if something works for me, I tend to stick to it. And I like to add all of the colors. So fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. And the last question from Carolina S. In today's day and age, it seems everyone on social media has either had Botox, filler, or surgery to look younger. Have you, why, or why not? Uh, this is a great question, and uh, no, I have, uh, I have not had Botox, filler, or a plastic surgery to look younger. I have had a plastic surgeon come in contact with my face, but it wasn't for a glamorous reason. Uh, I know, again, this is gonna be total TMI, but I'm just throwing that out there. Um, but I actually had a, <laughs> This is so not like, this is, I feel like this video is giving you guys so much TMI, but I had a zit uh, in between like my lip and part of my chin and I kept messing with it over and over that it ended up turning into a cyst. I went to the dermatologist, they recommended a plastic surgeon to have it removed. So that's what I mean that I've had a plastic surgeon <laughs> come in contact with my face. And um, you know, this is kind of a side note, but that's really why I'm so paranoid whenever I go to use colored lipsticks on my videos because I do have a scar here I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see it or not but when I do have those um, like if I have red lipstick or a brighter color you can really see the scar a little too much and I'm not really comfortable with that so I think that's probably why I end up sticking to nudes and glosses because it's not as noticeable so anyways that like I said that was a side note uh, but as far as Botox filler and surgery um, I don't see myself getting any of those um, and really the way that the, the way that I see it is that I'm okay with looking my age I'm okay with that I, it doesn't bother me at all you know and um, if someone gets surgery if someone gets Botox if someone gets fillers and if that makes them happy that's all that matters but if it's personally not for me and uh, even though I'm constantly saying I'm as old as Methuselah and things like that, um, I embrace my crow's feet and I like my laugh lines. I kind of view it, <laughs> I kind of view it like my handbags. I, this is gonna be so weird, but I kind of view it like my handbags in the sense that those those beauty flaws, those beauty marks give my face character. And um, you know, my, my teens were great. I don't wanna look like I did when I was a teenager. My 20s were great. I don't wanna look like I did when I was 20. And when I'm older, I don't wanna look like I did when I was 30 or 40 or anything like that. But uh, in general, like I said, if it makes someone happy to do those things, then you know, by all means go for it. It's just personally not for me. Um, I, you know, and I'm constantly saying my crow's feet this, my crow's feet that, but no, you can see. <laughs> I haven't had any cosmetic surgery as far as trying to look younger this this guy gets really deep sometimes because I'm constantly frowning or making faces um, when I was younger my mom would say many stop making faces or your face is gonna stay that way because I'm always like I'm always playing with my face so this guy is really <laughs> really intense but eh, it is what it is it doesn't matter to me you know and if someone thinks that I should get surgery um, that's their opinion but um, it's not, uh, it's not necessarily for me. So fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Uh, all right, so before I sign off with you guys, I have something I wanted to bring up just in case. So today is Minx Monday 199. Oh my goodness, we are one week away. How crazy is that from 200? My gosh, 200. That's insanity. Um, so what do we do after 200? Because I, I, I know I talked about this before with like 100 or 50 or whatever it was, but I mean, do you guys still want me to continue? I did think about, um, and I'm just throwing this out there, I did think about possibly taking two, three weeks off of Minx Monday um, just to kind of, you know, hang out a little bit and maybe do other types of videos. Um, but what do we do after 200? Do we continue to, do we keep going? Or, I mean, should I just 
quit while I'm ahead type of thing because I have noticed that uh, we have um, a lot more uh, a lot more to our Minx Monday family a lot more members to our Minx Monday family and um, some of the questions that I have answered in maybe like two three videos ago or 10 videos ago or 20 videos ago are coming up so they might become a little too repetitive and I don't want to bore you guys by any means whatsoever so that's why I ask you um, am I <laughs> can I take like two weeks off or do we continue going what do we do I don't know so I really want to hear your guys's feedback because like I've said before this is one of my favorite videos to film um, I think it's really really great and I don't want to bore you guys I want to continue having fun I want to make sure that um, I know that a lot of you guys look forward to this video to, to get your week started or when you're going to work or whatever it is and I think it's pretty awesome but still I welcome your advice. I welcome your opinions on where we should go from here. I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, that does it for Mix Monday q and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week. Uh, for this week's lineup, I do want to do a wear and tear video and I haven't decided on the third video, but it should be up either Friday or Saturday. And um, I also wanted to take the time to thank each and every one of you for the amazing support that I got on my Get Ready With Me video. It was it was a blast to film and it just meant so much to me reading all of the wonderful comments, all of the support that you guys gave me. It was just incredible. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. But again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. And I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not, the choice is yours. Have a great day.